Hello, my little goblins. It's Chris, Eldritch Pipes here. And today is a tobacco review. I'm going to be reviewing Seattle Pipe Club's Hood Canal. And then after that, some pipe bits and bobs. In my usual as is my want. Now this Hood Canal, it's a very interesting blend. It's interesting because um, <laughs> I've mostly been smoking Jermaine's 1820. In fact, it's all I care to smoke at the moment. But um, I remember when I first smoked Hood Canal, and I brought this back with me from Chicago. And I remember that the bowl that I had then, I just had one. I remember not being that thrilled with it at the time. It was a bit too full on, I remember. Um, and I prefer a bit more subtlety. Uh, blends that are a little less in your face. But coming back to this, I think I've changed my perspective on it. So, it describes itself as an abundant Balkan mixture. Latakia, Turkish Orientals, Burley and Perique. No mention of Virginias. It's not as full as my first impression seem to be. Um, it's now, it's more incense-like. The Latakia is in the background. Not way in the back. Somewhere around the middle, maybe. So there, but it's also got that real Seattle Pipe Club sort of house blend style. You know what I mean? That sort of that bit tarty vinegar thing going on. The flakes are beautiful. Look at those guys. Really nice, meaty flakes. Lots going on there. Really well made flakes as well. I do love the crumble cake cut. I have to say, but over Jermaine's crumble cake cut, I mean, Seattle Pipe Club win hands down. But then they serve theirs in a, a tin and uh, Jermaine's is, is in like a loose packet. These at least have a chance of staying together. I'm not sure the Jermaine's would stay together even if they were in the tin. They're that loose. But this is a, a deep blend it almost verges on some cigar-like notes. I think that's where the richness comes from. Um, I'm going to assume that's the Burleys. So this is a real interesting play between the Lafakia and the Burley. With the Orientals I mean, it's, it, it's oriental 
forward. This, this is quite an interesting blend. So I say the latter key is in the background and then I say it's a balance between the latter key and the, the burly, but then the oriental keeps pushing forward as well. It is a really nicely balanced blend. The if the perique is in there, I, I I have trouble detecting it. You might get a little bit of I get a bit of pepperiness in the nose because I retrohale quite a bit, and so that's kind of you know I get a little tingle from perique. Other than that, it's sort of lost in the mix there. Burns really well. I mean, no messing about. Crumble, pack, burn. Although to be fair, my acorn burns. Most tobacco is quite well. And now I'm just, I really like it. I'm really liking this blend. Which is, that's an unusual turnaround. Normally what happens is that I, I think I really like a blend and then I go off it. I rarely, well I wouldn't say that I disliked it, but I, when I first smoked it, I. I didn't really see the attraction of it, and now I, I actually do quite like it a bit. So if you like a full rich blend, with Latakia in, but the Latakia is not dominating, you will probably like this, a little bit fruity. Uh, from that sort of tartness. So yeah, a lot going on. Quite a complex blend there. Who knows <laughs> if I'll smoke much of it, maybe when the 1820 is gone. No, actually, I think I will probably smoke a bit of that now. So there you go. Seattle Pipe Club's Hood Canal. Lovely blend. So, I thought it would be fun to show you some pipe things going on. Got pipes in different stages. Um, I'm doing a pipe of the year for a... Uh, is it a Belgian-Dutch pipe forum? Something like that. Sorry, Nick, if I've got that wrong. Anyway, the pipe of the year that I'm doing is a strawberry. Um, I actually forget if I've... I don't think I've shown this one before. Um, although I know I've shown some strawberries. The strawberry is a shape that I like to do a fair bit. This is in a um, chocolate and orange contrast blast and the stem material is my own rod stock uh, so it's quite a light pipe uh, I think this one comes in at just under 60 grams so mm, a clencher you can clench it it's not the lightest of pipes, but it's not it's not a beast. And uh, conical chamber. And just a nice little uh, blast on it there. Chocolate and orange strawberry there for for that group. And that's the first one that's gonna go out to Nick as the example. 
I've got some other things on the go. It's another strawberry. I'm in the middle of this one, but I thought you might like to see one of these not completed, not yet completed. It's the Alchemist Strawberry, which is the a resin fusion. So, as you can see, we've done the resin part. That's all polished up. Now it's a question of this rustication going all the way through. Um, it's not. I'm about halfway done here. It needs a fair bit more. And I've just begun on here. And then it all gets stained black. And the transition between shank and stem is completely invisible, totally hidden. So uh, this is going to be a good one. You're never entirely sure how these things are going to come out. Like the way that the, the resin hits the, the bowl, it's come out really nicely there. Nice and organic. Which is what I love. The resin, I make it fuse to the plateau side so it's a lovely natural weirdness. It's always random. You don't, don't know what you're going to get until you get there. And that one's come out. Quite lovely. Fair bit of work to go yet. And <laughs> this is even more bizarre. I think what I'll do is I'll show you this as it is now, and then I'll show you it when it's more completed. So this is like, this will be a shroom pipe. You can just sort of, maybe you can just imagine how it might go. Um, but the work that goes into a shroom pipe is is quite a lot. You can't do, the only drilling that's done on a lathe is literally the airway and the tobacco chamber. All the rest of the carving is done totally by hand. There's no other way to do these ones because of how you have to get into it. So I've just started and there's a there's a whole way to go on it, but you'll be able to see how it shapes up. A shroom pipe. There should be um there'll be like bridge parts and um and cutouts that go in over the top there. You'll see. Now also, I did an interesting experiment last week. Um, mostly for fun. I'm not saying that this is something I'm going to be doing a lot of in the future. But I made a bowl for the falcon. And if you know my pipes, you know that this is a, a reading pipe bowl. with the old plateau there, quite deep. I think it's just about the usual two inches there. This is on the, um, if you know your falcons, this is the Falcon International pipe stem. Made by Resin know-how. <laughs> we cast the the threads of the uh, the falcon in resin, so that's how we get such a perfect fit. There you are. That's the falcon bowl. Now, as you see, it's currently unsmoked. I um, pre-carbonised the, the 
chamber. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet. More or less, it's just a one-off. Uh, I'm either going to smoke it, or, um, well, I don't want to tease you. I might give it away. I don't know how many of you out there are falcon, uh, sm smoke a falcon pipe, but I might give it away. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. All right. <laughs> That's it for today. Um, I am away for a bit, so it might be a couple of weeks before I do another video. But until then, take it easy. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. Ta-da, chaps.